chapter four. So I'm looking forward to the day. This is gonna this is really gonna be informative. And I hope you're here to worship God. And we're just gonna see some courses like we did last week called Praise Time. We're gonna have a good, good time. All right. Uh, how many here to worship today? Didn't God all everybody stand up? Y'all at home stand up. But if you're in your easy chair, you might want to stand up and at least repeat this, all right? Here we go. These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one. Accept my worship, oh Lord. Y'all, look at somebody tell me you're looking good in spite of yourself. In spite of me. <laughs> all right. Let, let's sing a little bit. Ready? Glory, glory. Here we go. We turn, we get everything turned on here. Technology works good if you get it turned on and tuned up, tuned up and powered up. There we go. Ready? Oh, it's glory, glory.
Okay, it's time to receive our offering. Uh, we have our little brass brass man in the back, and so you can drop it in the brass man's hand when you come in or when you go out. But if you haven't already, get in your hand. If you've already dropped, just get your hand. Once you hold it up, we're going to repeat together. Y'all ready? I lift my offering to you. Let it please you, O oh Lord. This is my seed. I will leave my hand. It will never leave my life. You will multiply it. Accept my seed, O oh Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap for prayer. Thank you, Lord. the Lord in prayer this time. If you have a special request you'd like to sing the Bible up with your hand this morning, amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the time and opportunity we have to be in your house and be amongst our people. God, as we gather together in one mind and one accord, we ask that you would be here in the midst, Lord God. Bring deliverance into every life. Supply every people according to your riches and glory. The testimony will be given, Father. As we depart from this place, we can declare we've been in the presence of God. In Jesus' name, the church says. Are you washed in the blood? Ready? Are you washed?
with your fried chicken, fried chicken will make you sick. Amen. <laughs> so we had some greens last week with our fried chicken. Amen. Get your Bibles out. Turn to Revelation. We're going to part one of, of uh, chapter four today. Revelation chapter four. I'm going to try to build a little case today for the rapture. Some theologians say, well, this is not necessarily the rapture and there's all kinds of things, but you, you know, you get a bunch of theologians together within within five minutes they're going to start disagreeing. So you gotta go by the word of God. You gotta go by what the word of God says, or you get yourself in trouble anyway. And I just believe that what the word of God says is what the word of God means. Amen? If you don't want to get in some kind of great old big debate with somebody, if the word of God says it, I believe it. None of this mess, well, it, God meant that, but he didn't mean that. He meant this and he didn't mean that. No, if God wrote it, then it's real and it needs to be uh, be used. Amen? So you got your Bible. Let's see here. Got your Bible. Stand for the reading of the Word. Revelation chapter 4. Got your Bible say amen? amen? You don't say with me? Okay. It's kind of hard to look at it. Look over somebody when you're six foot apart. So look in the, look in the, uh, the front of the, the pew up there. And it should be one. I think I may even have it written down in here. I'm not sure. I've been putting the scriptures in there. I'm not sure if I put the scripture in this week or not. No, I, I didn't. I didn't. So here we go. Here we go. After this. Y'all say after this. After this? Wait a minute. How, how's he starting off a message, a chapter with after this? I'm getting ready to tell you. There's a reason why here's an after this. There's a reason why that now the subject is changing. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me. Which said, come up hither, and I will show you things which must be here after. And immediately, I'll say immediately. Immediately. Immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And we're going to just leave it right there, because we're not going any further today. That's all we're going to we'll focus on, is those uh, two scriptures. Father, I love you. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace and mercy. I thank you, God, for all you do for us, Lord. I thank you, God, that you are get more real all the time. I ask you right now, Lord, to minister to us and through us, Father, in a very powerful way. And we know you got this. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Where did Eddie go? Eddie, can you turn on the lights up here? Where's Eddie at? Bless him. When he comes in, tell him. He knows how the lights are so he turned on. There's nothing up here. Amen. Which may be better for y'all because y'all can't see me then. The only problem is I need to be able to see what I'm doing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, let's just stop it right there. Here we go. Let's go back over this way. I'm trying to get back. I'm getting all, I'm getting all out. Oh, there you go. There is chapter four. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I went back to the old book today. So y'all get ready. It's from the old book. Eddie, can you turn on some lights? Everything's off up here. Uh, a middle-aged woman had a heart attack and was taken to the hospital. While on the operating table, she had a near-death experience. Seeing God, she said, is my time up? God said, no, you have another 43 years, two months, and eight days to live. Upon recovery, the woman decided to stay in the hospital, have a facelift, liposuction, and a tummy tuck. She even had someone come in and change her hair color. Since she had so much more time to live, she figured she might as well make the most of it. After her last operation, she was released from the hospital. While crossing the street on her way home, she was killed by an ambulance. Arriving at the front of God, she demanded, I thought you said I had another 40 years. God said you do, but I, I didn't recognize you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So... <laughs> John the Revelator and his rapture. Remember, the Bible is so full of 
so people say, well, the, show me the rapture in the Bible. Remember the word rapture is never found in the Bible. Y'all need to tell somebody when I start telling about temple rapture is found in the Bible. The word rapture is actually in the Greek harpazo. Harpazo means to be called up. It means to uh, uh, not to be called up, but it means to be snatched away. And the Bible is full of references of us being called up and being snatched away. And so, uh, and I looked through yesterday, and I, just a few, I, I was looking through it, I can't tell you how many times I saw the word harpazo used when God was snatching up somebody. And so, so again, whenever you see the word reverence, so when I says, I don't see rapture in the Bible, tell them, uh, that lets me know you're studying your Bible. Good. It's not in the Bible. But harpazo is. So if you want to study Greek, okay, let's go for it. All right. Don't really try to freak them out. All right, man. Harpazo. Like Groucho Marx, Harpo Marx, Harpazo. That's the, fourth, the fifth. <laughs> the fifth Marx brother, Harpazo. All right, ready? Here we go. The world is about to experience one of the greatest events in church history. Something dramatic is going to take place and it's going to summon the end of the church age. Not only is it going to summon the end of the church age, it's going to summon the end of the age of grace and the age of the spirit. Okay? And what that is is the rapture. I know there's a lot of controversy about the rapture and even the timing of the rapture. People say, well, if the rapture, there, there's the, uh, here we go again, there's the pre-trib, which I believe in. There's the mid-trib, which means halfway through the tribulation period we'll be raptured away. There's the post-trib that believes at the end of the tribulation period we're going to go up just so Jesus can get with us and take us back down. That's kind of crazy. You know, we just got here, Jesus, now it's time to leave. Amen? So, so pre-trib, I really believe it's the, the pre-trib rapture. And, and so, so let's just go a little bit further here. Maybe I can clear up some things uh, about the rapture. So, so remember, uh, pictures and types. That's all God I ever used. And this is, these are some, some stuff that I use on every one of the rapture 3Ds. So I just want you to get it. Okay? God always. Y'all say always. Always. God always leaves a trail of pro prophetic breadcrumbs. Always. And you'll see these breadcrumbs uh, in the form of pictures and types that in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament that lead up picture or type uh, what's coming in the future. So that way you know that God's got this because He's already shown me years before it happened. And what it shows me is that God is always in control and God is always calling history. God is always in control. Y'all say He's always in control. Always. So I say always again. All right. And here, here again, I just want to just quickly uh, talk about some rapture types. This is not all of them. This is some of them. And the word harpazo, and even in the Old Testament, the Old Testament version of harpazo is used. Okay. So Enoch. Enoch in Genesis, uh, he walked with God. He was not for God took him. Elijah, a uh, chariot of fire and a whirlwind, took him up and snatched him away. Philip, uh, he was baptized in the eunuch, and after he baptized the eunuch, the Bible says the Spirit caught him away, harpazo. Paul, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, said he was caught up in the Spirit into the third heaven. That word caught up again is harpazo. You know, and then Jesus himself, he was taken away at the end and beginning of the book of Acts and said, coming back, the angel said, he's coming back in the same way that he left. He's coming back in the clouds. So now, so here it is. Although, here's John's rapture. Although the, the rapture in chapter 4 is not clearly called the rapture, it is clearly indicated. Now, again, there's some theologians, you know, there's theologians all over the place, and especially those that, that want to fight about uh, uh, pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib. Some even call it a-trib, meaning that it's, that, you know, uh, uh, it's not even going to happen. We're just going to go on, and Jesus is going to come down, and that's how it's going to be. So there's all these theories, you know, a bunch of theories. So let's just get away from the theories, and let's just take the word for what it says, Okay. Because you can sometimes, you know, it's amazing how, how a theologian can make simple scripture so complicated that you can't understand the word they say it. Amen? How, how simple is Jesus loves me, the song we just sang? So simple. Amen? 
So, so here we go. So, so here. That, that's, this is why I believe in the pre-trib rapture. It said after this. Okay? Again, it said after this. That's the very first words we read was after this in chapter 4. Okay? So, so let's go ahead and watch this now. The arrangement of the events. Uh, in, in, in chapter 1, verse 19, this was our very first uh, very first sermon. I'm just going to read this to you, chapter 1 of Revelation. It says, I, John, who also am your brother, companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom of the patience of Jesus Christ, was on the side which is called Papas for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, which meant he was spiritized. I mean, in order for him to see what he was going to see, God had to change him. So there's one change right there. He's in the spirit. He's spiritized. He's seeing things that's getting ready to happen, okay? And I heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet saying, I'm Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. While thou seest, write in the book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus and Smyrna, and then the Pegamus, and the Thyatira, and then the Sardis, and then the Philadelphia, and then the Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paths with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were like were white like wool, and as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet were likened to fine brass as they burned in the furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and on his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his hand upon me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last. And here's, the, here's the scripture I want to go to right now. I am he that lived with him was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and death. Write these things that thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Write things you've seen, the things which are, and the things that shall be hereafter. Here's the arrangement of events. Uh, the first two segments have already been completed. The very first thing he said, write the things that you have seen. What did he see? He saw the glorified Christ. He's locked up. He's on Alapatmos. Or not necessarily locked up. He's locked away from people. He's on Alapatmos. He can't get away. And so he's on Alapatmos. And, and he could not get to God. But it didn't stop God from getting to him. Wow. Think about that. He couldn't get to God. But it didn't stop God from getting to him. So that's what he saw. He saw. He said, right, what you see, the glorified Christ. So he wrote it. Then he said, write the things which are. The things which are was the seven churches. Remember, the seven churches were seven churches of that day. They actually were in a circle. And these seven churches represented seven individual congregations with seven individual temperaments and personalities. It also represents seven different types of Christians. And it represents seven different church ages. And last week, we finally did the last one which is the age we're living in now, the Laodicean age. So, those first two segments are complete. The things you've seen, the glorified Christ. Then for weeks now, we've been doing the seven churches. Things which are. Okay? He says, I also need you to write the things which are getting ready to take place after. What is this that's getting ready to take place after? What is, what is that? That's a picture of the Lord's day. Remember, the Lord's Day is not just one day. The Lord's Day is seven years, and it's a series of events. It starts with the rapture, and then, then here comes the Antichrist, the four horses, which we're going to be talking about soon, and all the things that happen in the seven years' tribulation, and Jesus Christ comes back and takes care of business. So that's the Lord's Day, the day of God's wrath. So because it's the day of God's wrath, that's what the Lord's Day is. So it's not... One day is a series of events. If you can get that in your mind, it'll help you when you have to see the, the, the Lord's day. When you see it written in Scripture, it's not one day. It is a series of events which last many, many years. So, so John's rapture. How do I, why, why do I put the rapture?
pastor right here. Well, and remember that there's some theologians say we're off when we say this, but I believe the Bible says what it means. You can take it and slice it and dice it what you want to with it. But it's kind of obvious. He said, after this. After this. Watch, watch, watch this. Watch. After we talked about the churches and we're going to talk about the Lord's Day, there's going to be a little intervention, intervention in between or intermission between talking about the churches and the Lord's Day. Something's got to be in there. Actually, it is actually the crowning event. It is the starting gate. It is the starting whistle for what's coming. Okay? So know that when the rapture takes place, that is the starting whistle for the day of the Lord. So now, watch this. Let's just, let's just take this out a little bit. Why would I say that this is the rapture? Well, because after this, you never hear about the church again in the book of Revelation. That's it. You hear about you hear about Alapapis, you hear about the stuff that he's in the he's in, he's in the seven golden candlesticks, all this stuff's going on, and you have all this about the, the seven churches, and then you have this this event that happens, and when this event happens where John now is called up into heaven to see what's going on, goes into an open door, that is the rapture, the pre-trib rapture. Matter of fact, I see it. This, this is so awesome. If you're taking notes, you need to write these down so this will keep you on, on track. Not one time is the church mentioned after chapter 3. Not one time. Never is it mentioned again. Now watch this. I'm going to even take it a little bit further. In chapter 2 and in chapter 3, he always ends each church with, He that has an ear, hear what the Spirit says, to the churches. Remember, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. But from here on out, he just says, if anyone has an ear, let him hear. Wow. Never again. Not hear what, the, it, what, the, what God's saying to the churches. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. Seven times he says, hear what the Spirit has said to the churches, but now you don't hear church anymore. Okay? Then, uh, also, before you hear God talking about the Father, and God talking about uh, uh, in, in a relationship, but in chapter 4 through 19, God is not referred to as the Father, but is referred to as God. Lord Almighty and other non-personal names. And so the church, we're the ones that get the personal treatment. Okay? We are the children of God. We are the bride of Christ. So because we are the bride of Christ, that's why you hear Father. But after Revelation chapter 3, you hear that no more. Why? Because the church is gone. Okay? So now, 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 this is important to remember this now. Not only is the church going to be gone, but, but remember this now. Everything from here on out is going to be talking about the Jews. Tribulation has got two strong purposes. Number one is to, it's all about reclamation. Rec redeeming or reclaiming the Jews. They're, they think Jesus hadn't come yet. They meant, uh, not the Messianic Jews, but the, but the Orthodox Jews. They believe Jesus hasn't come yet. And the Antichrist is going to fool them. They're going to think he is the Christ. So it's during this time they're going to realize they were wrong. And they begin to be chased. And they understand that Jesus Christ has already come. Okay? So, all about reclamation. God reclaims the Jews. Also, it's about reclaiming the earth. Satan is the god of this world, the prince of the power of the air. Right now, he has a tight reign on this world. If you haven't noticed it lately, take a look. Watch the news. Look at the stuff that's going around. All the stuff's happening all over the world. Satan is the god of this world. 
But during the tribulation period, when all hell breaks loose, God's going to reclaim his creation. So, so here we go. Let's go a little bit further. So there's the absence of the church. Secondly, there's the ascension of the Holy Spirit. Watch this now. This, this is really, really cool. And, and, and again, this probably is the most technical for pre-trib rapture than any other scripture in the Word. Okay? So, Revelation 2 and 3, the Holy Spirit's in the midst of the churches. In Revelation chapter 4, the Holy Spirit's before the throne. Wow. Before the rapture, the Holy Spirit's right there. After the rapture, the Holy Spirit's now before the throne of God. And 2 Thessalonians 2 and 6 says that there's a restraining force. It says that the mystery of iniquity is already work, and he who now lets will let it until he's taken out of the way. Then will the wicked one take over. The son of perdition will be revealed after he that let us taken out of the way. In other words, the restraining force. Where is the restraining force? It's in the Holy Spirit, but where is the restraining force? The Holy Spirit dwells in the church. So if you take the church out, the Holy Spirit is taken out. And now what you got is, the Bible says, according, if you look in the book of, of, of Revelation, now the Holy Spirit is like the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came in drops, in sprinkles. In the New Testament, the Holy Spirit was poured out without measure. Now in Revelation again, it didn't say he was taken away. It said he'd be taken out of the way. There's a difference. To be taken away means he's not going to be anywhere to be found. But taken out of the way means he is, okay, Satan, you won the world, you got it. People, you thought he was Christ, you got it. Take it. Wow. You think all hell's broke loose now? Nothing even close. Okay? So, so, so here we are. This is, again, we're talking about John's rapture. So first there's the absence of the church. There's an ascension of the Holy Spirit. Next, there's the affirmation of scriptures. Listen to these words here. Just, just these words. Don't say this word, voice. Somebody say voice. 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 Okay. Now, so, so first, voice. If you look at Revelation chapter 4, it says, After this I looked. And behold, the door was open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither. And I'll show you things. Wow. First Thessalonians 4 16 says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Again, look, the voice. Not only is there a voice, there's a trumpet. Revelation chapter 4, we just read it. Uh, uh, there's war. They heard this sound like a trumpet talking with me. First Thessalonians, we just read it. The trump of God. In 1 Corinthians 15, it says, in, uh, uh, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Wow. So if you look at all this stuff, now, this is building a case for the pre-trib rapture. Okay? Again, I'm not going to argue with people. If you want to say mid-trib, that's fine. If you want to say post-trib, that's fine. If you want to say a-trib, that's fine. Because when it happens, we can argue on the way up. Okay? This is not going to make it or break it when you get to heaven. It's the blood of Jesus and the blood of Jesus only. It's the power of the cross gets you saved, not your theology. <laughs> Amen. So now, the next one is change. When you see this, this change, again, Revelation 4 and 2, it says, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and on the throne was set in heaven, and one that sat on the throne. 1 Corinthians 15, 52 again. And for in the twinkle of an eye, the last trump, the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 
That's what the rapture is for. All the people that we know, all of our loved ones, and if we should go before the trumpet sounds, the body, the flesh, is in the ground. But the soul is with God. People say, well, they've gone to their reward. No, they haven't. They've gone to safety. To safety, not their reward. Safety. Oh, it's rewarding to be there. I've been telling you, when I walk through those gates, I, I'm going to, you, you look, they, they say when I jumped out of that airplane, you can hear me hollering glory from, from, from 20,000 feet. Glory! But you know what? Can you imagine? I, I can't wait. I might just shout on one leg for 10,000 years and another leg for another 10,000. Okay? Made it. But the trumpet, we're going we're to talk about this too. The, the actual reward is going to come during the seven year tribulation at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And that's where the judgment seat of Christ is going to be. The judgment seat of Christ is not for hell. The judgment seat of Christ is for Christians to get their rewards. And you can't get that reward until time is up because whatever you've done now follows you. You're gone, but it still follows you. The people that you influence and they influence and they influence. Then, then, you know, Billy Graham, awesome, awesome man of God. And, and, and I know God's got many stars in his crown, okay? But you know what? If you check him on back, you know who caused the man that was preaching when Billy Graham got saved to be, to, 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 Come under conviction and be saved, Billy Sunday. So, 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 see, Billy Sunday's going to be getting some of that Billy Graham stuff. You know what I'm saying? All the stuff that Billy Graham's got, Billy, uh, Billy Sunday's going to be getting some of that reward too. So, 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 your body's still in the ground, but at the rapture, we're going to be changed. The, the body's going to be raised incorruptible. The soul is going to come down, and you're going to meet together your body and soul, and you have an incorruptible body. Is glorified, and then you go back to heaven, and that's when God can do something. Because now, now you're complete. Okay? So, so before the rapture, you're safe. Before the tribulation, you're safe. But after the tribulation, now you get your rewards. Alright? So, the affirmation of Scripture. And then finally, and I'm getting ready to, I'll tell you, I won't, won't take a long time. I'm going to get this, and then we're going to, and then we're going to get. Get uh, Brandon come here and play something softly for us, and we're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna have a good time with God. I told you this one was not quite as skinny back like last week did. Amen. All right. So now the attendance of John. Watch this. John is called to heaven. Come up hither. Come up hither. The rapture trumpet. Come up. Come up out of the grave. Come up and meet Jesus. Come up hither. We're not all gonna. We're not all gonna sleep. But we're all gonna be changed, and even the ones that are alive are gonna be changed right here on earth. Be changed, and we're gonna put on the incorruptible, and we're going up. Okay. So, so John is called to heaven. Come up hither. Now, in this scenario, John is a type of the church, and because John is a type of the church, you gotta think about all this. Remember. The church is his bride. I promise you, the day that Linda Linton come down that aisle, dressing that wedding gown, coming down the aisle to me, not only was I the happiest man in the world, I thought she was, and I still think she is, I thought she was the most beautiful woman in the world. And I would do nothing to mutilate my bride. Nothing. Nothing. Do you think since we are the bride of Christ that God's going to let his bride go through tribulation? He said, I will deliver you from that hour. Now, we read it in seven churches. Philadelphia said, look, when the, when the bad times come, don't you worry because if you got this kind of Philadelphia spirit, then, if I call it the Philadelphia freedom, don't worry because when that hour comes, I'm going to deliver you from it. You don't have to worry about this. So, so the, church is a, the church is his bride. And come up hither means to be raptured into the ultimate presence to prepare for the wedding feast. 
Now, now, now and I'm going to make y'all some copies of these outlines. Like I told y'all was, I keep forgetting. I got, I got to see which, which churches I have got, what I don't have. I'll make sure it'll be out there. And all this revelation, I'll, I'll put it out there for you. Again, watch this now. The first time the door opens, this it is. Chapter 4. The first time the door opens to heaven, somebody goes up. The next time, oh, it is peace and safety and glory and just honor. It's magnificent. We're going to talk about that next week when he finally gets a chance to see what he's been living for all those years. So the first time the door opens, somebody goes up into peace and comfort and safety. The next time the door opens, somebody's coming down. Remember that little innocent lamb? Mary's little lamb? He would come down the first time as the little lamb. Quiet before his shearers. He let them beat him mercifully. The Bible says he was beaten so bad he didn't even look like a man when he went to that cross. That was the first time he came. The next door that opens in heaven, he's coming back. There's all kinds of things to be able to up. I'm not talking about the four horsemen and all that stuff. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about when he comes down. The first door is open to go to him. The second door is for him to come down and take care of business as the lion of the tribe of Judah. And I don't think I've ever seen a lion scared of anything. Have you? I was really excited. I'm going to tell you this. I was really excited that now they've put back on TV Marlon Perkins and Mutual Omaha's Wild Kingdom and Lynn and I had recorded a bunch of them so we were going to watch them one day and we sat down and I realized but I, was like, well, I thought he was just absolutely awesome. But I'm surprised to even show it now because I'm surprised that the Humane Society don't go after him. He took a cobra and got in front of a cobra and put a, put, put a board up here and he went, watch this. I'm thinking, dude, you were absolutely crazy. <laughs> you tried to spit it, but it's hitting that thing. Yeah. Oh, he got a little bit on my side of it. A cat falls off the table, he grabs around by the head and yanks him back up. I'm thinking, good man, what's going on here? And then, then there was a cobra and a little whatever kind of animal, and he was trying to show how they fight, so he put the cobra in there and he threw the animal in there with him. I was thinking, man, oh man, the Humane Society would get him nowadays. My family didn't watch anymore, I think. That's all I can handle. <laughs> I thought Steve Irwin was something. No, 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 no. Marlon Perkins made Steve Irwin look like a Cub Scout. <laughs> okay. Here's the question. Here they are. And they're going to close. Come on up here, Brandon Gary, play something softly. I want you to ask yourself some questions. Right now. While on earth am I here for? What's my purpose? Number two, am I ready to meet Jesus? Be prepared. Am I living life fully? Be expected. Am I concerned for others? Be sharing. Reach of one more for Jesus. This could be the day. Last week I talked about spiritual show and tell. Do we just come to church as a spiritual show and tell? Do I just come to church to shut my wife up? Do I just come to church to shut my parents up? Do I just come to church to show everybody what I got? Or do I come to church to learn of God? Do I come to church to participate? collective worship.
You say, well, I have to go to church to be a Christian. No, going to church makes you a Christian by as much as going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. But, it's God's design. The church is the New Testament version of the Old Testament synagogue for the Jews. God designed us to be together. He even said one could chase a thousand, but two could put ten thousand to flight. Wow! One could chase a thousand. You would think, well, two would be ten, or two thousand. No, two, ten thousand. It's called synergy. One horse may can pull fifteen. I'm just throwing a number out here. Fifteen hundred pounds. Put another horse beside him and yoke him. You think, well, they pull 3,000 pounds. No, they can pull 6,000 pounds. God wants us to serve God individually and collectively, to worship God individually and collectively. It's not going to be long now. We are on the launching pad. I believe with all my heart, we're on the launching pad. No more time for spiritual show and tell. Now's the time to step. Listen carefully. Now's the time to be ready to step into the jaws of hell. I'm going to let it sink in for a minute. Now's the time to be ready, if necessary. To step in the very jaws of hell and reach one more for Jesus. I was at Anna Lane's softball game Thursday night. I didn't hear the phone ring. And I said I got a message. Didn't recognize the number. So I listened to the message on the way home. And it was somebody from B5. And sometimes you feel like you're not necessarily reaching people. Because sometimes these guys can be very hard on each other. And, I mean, you got a bunch of heroin addicts and alcoholics together. They can really be mean to each other. And come across rough anyway. And it took a while to get break through to this guy. But eventually broke through text me or, or left me a message and said, I just want you to know I'm out. He said, I'd like to talk to you sometime. He said, I just want to thank you for telling me about Jesus. He says, I know sometimes you feel like it goes on deaf ears. He says, but I want you to know that what you do matters. people are listening and he said you challenged my life and it will never be the same thank you I'm not printing any awards on me for that not one I just wanted to tell that because I know some of y'all feel like maybe you're trying to reach people and you feel like it's not going anywhere you're trying to tell me about Jesus and it's not going anywhere you try to live the life and you weren't even paying attention. They are. People are watching. They're listening. They're taking mental notes. God wants to use every last one of us. Stepping into the jaws of hell is more than just PCDC. Stepping through the jaws of hell may be going in your own neighborhood. Stepping in the jaws of hell may be at your own workplace. Get ready. Stepping in the jaws of hell may be even in your own family.
ready, be prepared, be expected, and be busy. That's all, Stephen. There's a lot of prophecy to be fulfilled in the book of Revelation. There's even prophecy to be fulfilled before the Antichrist comes. People say, well, he's here in the house. I've heard him say he's already been revealed. No, he hasn't been revealed, but I believe he's here. But he hasn't been revealed yet. And the spirit of Antichrist has been here since the beginning of the church. The spirit of Antichrist has been here ever since the birth of the church. And there's people that had that spirit of Antichrist, and that'd be like Hitler and Mussolini and Saddam Hussein, those guys, they had the spirit of Antichrist. But they weren't the Antichrist. And I believe he's here. And he's going to be so subtle that he's going to suck everybody in, especially when he tries to describe why all these thousands of people are missing because of the rapture. There's not one speck of prophecy left before the rapture can take Before the rapture can actually take place. It could happen right this moment. But after the rapture takes place, he that leadeth the restraining force when it's taken out of the way, then the son of perdition will be revealed. And all hell is going to break loose. I know you've heard this and it's not a cliche. Although it sounds like it. I don't want to take my chances. I want to go into first load. <laughs> Amen, bro. I want to go into first load because the first load we get changed. We're in like... The next ones are going to go by putting their head on the block. Wow. Wow. The next one are going to go by being martyred, by being killed, by being crucified. So, I want to go to first load and let God do something. I want to be in heaven when all this is going on. I want to be down here. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around. I'm going to ask you a question. Very simply, are you ready if the rapture should take place today? Are you ready? Are you ready for the first load? Are you ready? Because once that takes place, Wow. It's going to be amazing. We're going to talk about it next week. It's going to be amazing. Are you ready? Do you know you and God got it together? I don't mean you got to be perfect. There's not one, not one perfect one in here. Doesn't mean that you don't mess up. Doesn't mean that you don't have to repent all the time. I have to repent all the time. Especially when I have a two thirteens in my mouth at the same time. I had to repent for my attitude. I had to repent for my actions just like everybody else does. But that doesn't mean I'm not ready to meet God because I keep the list short. When I realize I've done something whether the Holy Spirit tells me or whether I realize it, I go ahead and repent right then and keep the list short. Because I want to go on the first load. Right now, with every head bowed, every eye closed, if you're not sure that you're ready for that first load, you're not ready to hear that voice. But first, let me tell you, if you're not ready, you're not going to hear that voice. You're not going to hear that trumpet. But if you are, you're going to hear it. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, if you are not sure Nobody's looking around. We just get a hand up and say, I'm not, I'm not sure that I'm ready for the first load. 
Touch them, Lord. Touch them, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Bring them peace and comfort and solitude. And to know that even though they may have sometimes problems with attitudes and problems with actions, all they got to do is stay prayed up and have a repentant heart and say, God, forgive me. You'll be ready for that first love. Maybe you're here today and you still just struggle. You know you're going to go into first and love, but you're still struggling. You struggle because every time you turn around, that attitude gets in your way, them actions get in your way, and you just, ah, oh, you struggle. And you need God to help you with the struggle. Nobody look around, every eye closed. When you put that hand up, I, I, I have problems with the struggle. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, bless them, bless them. Bless those with their hands up, Lord. Let them feel your power and your anointing in this struggle. To know that you've got them. And that it's by grace alone, not by works, by grace alone. By grace alone are they saved. Right now, in the name of Jesus, let's all pray together. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your word. For your word. I thank you for revelation. Because it shows me just how close we are. Help me to be rapture ready. Help me to keep my lips short. Help me to live a repentant lifestyle. That's not one free of error. But it is one full of grace. And I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. And God, we give this day to you. And we thank you for what's getting ready to happen. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 Isn't God good? Oh. Brandon, you sounded good, bro. Don't you sound good? Yeah. Very, very, very good. All right. Tuesday night, we're still talking about the New Testament. We're talking about the church, I mean, uh, uh, the Word of God. It is more or less kind of technical, like today's message was more technical, I think. Trying to build a case. Uh, that's you, had a, you had an apologetic approach to the pre trip rapture. You would tell somebody to be real technical and real theological with them. Uh, just tell them, so you had, a, today in church, you had an apologetic approach to the pre trib rapture. <laughs> and they're going, oh, they I have no idea what that means, but we're getting ready to leave. <laughs> Amen. Isn't God good? Oh, yeah. All the time. God is good. It's so good to see Brother Jimmy back. But his blessing is hard. He's had a time with that leg. Brother Jimmy, you dismiss us in prayer, please. Father, just thank you for this day. Thank you for the message you got today.